Actually, Fox News did have a number of positive reactions to Friday's jobs reports. Here is Larry Kudlow, a top White House economic advisor under former President Donald Trump. I know many of my conservative friends are trying to drill holes in this report. But you know what, folks? It is what it is. It's a very strong report. Not every economic stat should be viewed through a political lens. I've been in this business a very long time, and sometimes you just have to throw away the ballot box and just recognize the numbers. They are what they are. This was a very strong report. There you go. All right. Friday's numbers showed the U.S. economy added 353,000 uh, jobs last month. Economists had predicted gains around 185,000. So that's a lot more than expected. But despite continued strong economic data, new polling from NBC News shows just 36 percent of registered voters approve of how President Joe Biden has handled the economy. And when asked who they would trust more to handle the economy, 55 percent said Donald Trump, compared to 33 percent who said Biden. So, Jonathan O'Meara, the, the, the numbers are uh, stark, uh, despite uh, the good numbers in the economy. And let's keep that one up right there, 55 to 33. Why, uh, what's the Biden White House's explanation and what are they going to do about it? I was speaking to some senior aides at the end of last week uh, about this very matter, and they're still confident that they can turn this narrative around, that they point to strong, the jobs report, they, other strong economic metrics. Most, imp most importantly, they feel consumer sentiment. They feel like people are feeling better about the economy, and that translates usually into votes for the incumbent, the president who's overseeing that strong economy. But at least for now, there is a disconnect between Americans who now are starting to think better about how things feel economically, but they're not giving the White House any credit. Uh, there's a, that, that is something they need to work on. That's about messaging. That's about salesmanship. That's certainly something this White House is going to do. Now, some aides say to me that they feel like that inherently uh, Americans will vote for the incumbent even if they're not in love with that person if they feel economically stable. And that's where we're trending right now. Also, we heard from Jerome Powell over the weekend in a rare interview suggesting the rate cut's still coming. Uh, they might be delayed somewhat um, because yeah. of, frankly, the the strong jobs number and other measures, but there's still probably three cuts this year, and that would certainly boost the economy as well. And that could be even, oh. frankly, well-timed uh, for for this president as he heads into the re-election, which are so often economic referendums on the incumbent. Well, and, and Elise, you look at the numbers, obviously a lot of Democrats uh, panicking as Democrats do. Uh, we're in the beginning of February, long way to go. Uh, Joe Biden's numbers are very low. These are and and this is, you know, there was an FT um, article on this last week. I think that we talked about um, Donald Trump could win. Who knows? Maybe he wins in a landslide. Not saying he's not. I am saying though, if you look at numbers across the West, you see leaders that have low approval ratings. You saw Emmanuel Macron. Uh, when he was going into re-election with approval ratings in the low to mid 30s, he ended up with 58 percent of the vote. I just, I just think staring at approval ratings and panicking about February polls—that's just time wasted. No, and so much can happen from now until November. And you that's look at what about. really matters more than anything: are prices going to go down? Not just inflation, mm -hmm. uh, you know, gradually trending down, but are prices going to go down? And I think that's what's really hurting Joe Biden right now, because unlike the stock market, every American is, is impacted by rising prices. And so to be going out there and have your message be Bidenomics and that everything is fine and dandy, it's not the way that they should be messaging this. We feel your pain. We know it's been a tough time, but things are trending in the right direction. The fundamentals are good. It's getting better. I, I just think yeah. that it's come across the Biden administration's messaging has come across as tone deaf on the economy. And there just needs to be a little shift of acknowledging that Americans have been really hurting. 
Yeah, let's bring in right now the president of the National Action Network and the host of MSNBC's Politics Nation, Reverend Al Sharpton. Rev, I want to talk about the wars. There are a couple of wars that are raging right now. Uh, it's distracting for people. And uh, you, you, you brought it up the other day uh, on, on our show that you have people saying, hey, listen, I support the president, uh, but we're spending a lot of money overseas. I look at the news. There's a lot of news about what's going on overseas. I want people to help me here at home. You're hearing that, and I'm just wondering how much, despite a strong economy, how much are these wars uh, distracting from what the president's doing? I think a lot of it is distracting. When people look at the fact that you see the economy may be inching up, but uh, prices are not going down, and people are still kind of trying to make ends meet, and then they see these billions of dollars going abroad, even for legitimate reasons. They say, but what about me? Why are we spending all of this money, whether it's in Ukraine, whether it's in the Middle East, whether it's wherever? And it seems like I feel like I'm a second thought. And I think the politics of that is reflected by uh, these startling polls for the uh, Biden camp this weekend is people feel neglected. It's not that people may disagree that we should right. be on the right side of international conflicts, but people want to feel like, wait a minute, I'm a priority. I think President Biden is actually a very good sort of teacher on this front about not just the respect for democracy here at home, Rev, but for stability in the world and for the, you know, promoting democracy around the world. I just wonder, does the White House need to focus on ex the explaining part? We were talking to Jeremy Bash about this earlier. As much as our participation in Israel and Ukraine is definitely draining resources and time, that it, that it is vital to stability of the world and ultimately America as a superpower, Rev. I think, I think that uh, they must make the connection so that people understand that we're not just in Ukraine or in the Middle East as charity, that it is directly connected. And the way that we protect you at home and the way that we enhance you at home is by covering our flanks abroad. I don't think there's been an effective uh, communication of the connection of why we are spending money, that it is not spending money on others, it's spending money to protect and to consolidate democracy everywhere, which keeps China at bay, which keeps Putin at bay. And as long as people don't see yep. the connection to my house, uh, they're going to feel neglected. I, you've got to convince yeah. people I've got to save the neighborhood to save your house. I, I, I've got to say right now, though, Elise, and I'm not I'm not questioning the importance of what the United States is doing overseas. You're you, you have a, I, now, I hope I got this right. I got your legal degree wrong. But I think, I think you, you, you have a bit of a libertarian streak in I you. Do. Is that correct? I do. That is, that is indeed okay. correct. So, so you're a perfect uh, person to, to lead this to. I, I, you know, I grew up in a family of cold warriors. I, I'm, I'm a little less libertarian on this front. That said, in Congress, I always, people would come to me and say, oh, we need to do this. I'd always stop and I'd say, hey, we can fight a one front war. And so we can fight. Don't ask me to fight two, three, four front wars. We can afford right now chaos in one area, contain that chaos, and then we can worry about these other things. Right now, for the average voter, it's a lot to see Israel and Gaza every day. That doesn't mean the Hamas attacks weren't heinous and Hamas must be destroyed. They must be destroyed. I get that. Ukraine. We've been here nonstop in support of Ukraine. Uh, I will tell you, General Milley said, though, a year ago, a year ago, those lines are frozen in place. He couldn't say it on air, but he said, those lines are frozen in place. We can keep giving them stuff, but those lines are frozen in place. And extend so the killing. Have, yeah. Do we want to keep those lines frozen in place? For, what? How many more years? One, two, four, five. Bring this up to say to the libertarian in you and for the libertarian and many Americans on foreign policy, there's a lot in the inbox right now, right? You got inflation, you've got all these other issues, you've got crime, they're processing that. Then you have Israel and Gaza on, on TV all the time. You've got the Ukraine war, you've got China getting ready to move on Taiwan. 
too many, too many fronts, too and much chaos. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Are bombs the U.S.'s greatest export? You know, you hear from some more hawkish congressional members, oh, but it's fueling job growth and arms factories in the U.S. And it, that argument just makes me a little sick and turns my stomach. Right now, we don't really have a coherent grand strategy of why we are fighting in the Middle East, why we still have bases in Jordan where three Georgia National Guardsmen and women are killed, why we are fighting this proxy war with Iran, but really in three other countries, not exactly with Iran. And then what is our strategy we're giving Israel? We provide around 15% of their defense budget in a normal year, yet we're using none of that leverage to, you know, what's happening in, in Gaza with the slaughter of children and, and innocents. And I'm all for, I think Israel deserved to have a robust response to kill Hamas. But when it goes beyond the laws of proportionality, we really need to question ourselves as a nation and what values we are supporting around the world.